I'm following up on a video I created last year about why Snowflake acquired Streamlit. Now I'll demonstrate why you should enable your Snowflake users to use Streamlit. We can attack this from various angles, but I'll approach it from the perspective of data scientists, who are an unusual bunch. Most of them don't just follow a code-first approach, they often prefer to work in a code-only manner. Drag and drop tools are not their jam. So here's their problem statement. After creating a new machine learning model, it can be difficult to demonstrate its value to your colleagues. You have performance metrics, but no easy way to enable folks to interact with your model. You could try to use a framework like Django to build a web app which illustrates your model's efficacy. Or you could try a framework like FastAPI to expose your model as a service. But using these frameworks can be time-consuming for data scientists without full-stack skills. They want to create the best models for their team, but if it takes days to turn a model into a web app, they won't do this until they're nearly finished with the modeling process. It would be better to involve stakeholders early and often, so models can be built that people actually need. The main benefit of Streamlit is that it simplifies this process. I'll illustrate this by giving a demo of a Streamlit app I built. I'm a car nut, so I obtained some interesting data from a website that provides annual EPA estimates for automobile fuel economy. I loaded the EPA data into a Snowflake table, which contains about 47,000 rows, each with 84 columns. Here are just a few lines from a Python program I wrote to perform several tasks. Engineer a bunch of informative features, train and test a predictive model, and save the model into a file that I can import into another Python program. I then wrote that second program to create this Streamlit app so that folks could try out my model to predict the combined city and highway miles per gallon for a new vehicle based on several readily available aspects. The number of engine cylinders, the engine displacement, the grade of gasoline, the type of powertrain and transmission, whether it's from a luxury brand like BMW or Mercedes, or from an economy brand like Honda or Kia, the EPA's vehicle size classification, and whether or not it has a supercharger or a turbocharger. Now I'll demo the app. Let's say I want a four-cylinder car with a 1.6-liter engine that takes regular gasoline, has front-wheel drive, a manual transmission, is from an economy brand, and the size will be a compact, and it has a turbocharger. When I click this button, my model predicts that my new car will get 28 miles per gallon. Based on all the variables I selected, the app will also display vehicles from the EPA data that have similar features and show their associated MPG estimates. The data is displayed in an interactive table. So with Streamlit, I very easily created a web app to show coworkers my predictive model and the underlying data it was trained on.